Here in America, when we talk about uh, temperature or heat, we talk about it in terms of Fahrenheit. Even if we don't explicitly say the word Fahrenheit after it, if you hear it's 90 degrees outside, it's a hot day, we're talking about degrees Fahrenheit. Or if you're baking a cake and it says preheat your oven to 350 degrees, it's also talking about Fahrenheit. And there's another system, other than Fahrenheit, that we sometimes have to convert to, which is called Celsius. Celsius, I hope I'm spelling these right. And the reason that we have Celsius, or the reason that Celsius sort of makes more sense when you really look at it objectively, is because Fahrenheit sort of has arbitrary values. I really don't know why they picked 100 degrees to be where it was. It gives you, I guess, a good um, approximation of what it's like outside, but Celsius does the same thing if you're used to Celsius. Um, but the reason that Celsius is cool is because of the temperature that water boils at and also freezes. So I'll write this down. Water boils. Uh, boils. So at Celsius, it's just 100 degrees. This is how they built the Celsius scale. They said water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That's our definition. And then in Fahrenheit, it's 212 degrees, which is just kind of a weird number. 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius. And then at the other end, this is the other definition of Celsius, because um, I'll show you. Uh, down here, if we draw this scale, I'm, I mean, the scale goes on forever, but this is the other really important value of the Celsius scale, is 0 degrees, which is defined as the point where water freezes. Water freezes. And so you can see why this would be useful for possibly cooking and, and science also, because if you're talking about chemistry and you have to know whether the, whether the liquid, whether the the uh, H2O is in a gaseous state or a ice state, a solid state, or a liquid state, then, then Celsius is a really good measurement for you to use because it's just, is it greater than 100? Is it less than zero? Super easy. And then in, in Fahrenheit, I think we know that it's minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit that water freezes, which is just sort of, like I said, just sort of weird numbers. I don't know where they came up with this or what the history is of it, but Celsius is more objective. It, it's, it has a purpose in mind. It, it says we're going to measure water temperatures, sort of. And, okay, so the conversion. I've given you the intuition of why Celsius exists, and you, you can kind of sort of get an idea. If, if you say it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside, then you know it's, you know, 60 Celsius, 70 Celsius, somewhere around there. But the actual conversion factor, if you actually want to figure this out, is that Celsius is equal to, I'll use a different color, 5 ninths. 5 ninths. And this is a scalar, 5 ninths times Fahrenheit. Okay? And that's just because the the scales are different. One degree of Celsius is a different size than one degree of Fahrenheit, because 212 all the way to minus 32 is the same distance as this. So the Celsius is sort of stretched out Fahrenheit scale. It, it's not a one-to-one -one scale that it's just shifted. So this is the scalar. Five ninths is how much you grow each one. And then also, uh, well, go back to that color, a minus 32 on the end. And, and all that does is just brings this up so that it's even because it's minus 32 is 0. So this is your um, conversion factor, or your conversion formula, rather, 5 ninths is the factor, for changing what you know in Fahrenheit to Celsius. And you can solve for f if you want to go the other way. <coughs> and I, w I just want to point out something else interesting, is there's another scale that's commonly used in scientific things, more like as astronomy than uh, than chemistry, I guess either one, is uh, it's called Kelvin, named after Lord Kelvin, I believe, came up with this. Um, and, and it 
it, like Celsius, has a purpose in mind. It, it's meant to to help with absolute zero. And I'll draw up here. Absolute zero. Absolute zero is the coldest possible temperature, or at least theoretically. I don't think we've ever reached it, but uh, just according to our calculations. The lowest possible temperature that we can ever have is minus minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And you, c you can imagine that's very, very unimaginably cold. This is when all motion stops inside of a substance. This is when even the electrons stop orbiting the the nucleus, from what I understand, um, but it, it uh, you know it's theoretical and it's the coldest possible temperature that you can ever reach. You can't get colder than minus 273.5 Celsius. And the way that Kelvin makes that easier is if you're working with, I'll extend this down. If you're working with minus what did I say 273.15 Celsius then that equates to, guess which number would be really easy for absolute zero? Zero. And and it's the same scale as as Celsius. So therefore, water boils at, well, you add 273 to this, so 373.15 is water water's boiling point going across. And so that's the Kelvin scale. It's it's um, not useful for everyday things. Y you know, you wouldn't say it's 236 Kelvin outside. Oh, also, it it doesn't use the degrees notation. You say degrees Celsius, you would say degrees Fahrenheit, but for this, it's just the the temperature is zero Kelvin, and and it's sort of a common mistake to use the word degrees. So. Once again, here's the formula. It's pretty simple, just five ninths. And and um, and if you forget if it's nine fifths or five ninths, or if you're having trouble with the intuition, you can think of you can think of this graph. Two hundred and twelve is one hundred. Water's boiling point, and then and then the freezing point is minus thirty two and zero. And then hopefully you can refigure this out from that.